Hey guys, so today I went to a Rubik's Cube competition, Caltech Winter. Don't worry, I made a vlog there. I just don't want to show it until like the chronological date in the vlog that it's supposed to show up because you know this, I had a backlog. I made vlogs like a few days in advance and then I got behind, but I haven't missed a day, but like I went through my backlog. So now the date in the start of the vlog is wrong, but I'm catching back up, stuff like that. Anyway, that video is coming out later, but one of the things I realized at the competition is that I've kind of been on a skewb kick recently, like, you know, I made a video on my Colorful Pockets channel about skewbs, and then I thought of a thing to talk about with skewbs today, and I'm probably gonna make another Colorful Pockets video about skewbs, so I'm, I'm just all about the skewb life now. I mean, skewbs just kind of a silly puzzle, like, it's weird, it doesn't look like it'll turn if you don't know what you're looking at. It's kind of cool, but also kind of silly, because it's a really short event, and, like, I don't really... Seems like kind of a waste of time as a WCA event. Just my opinion. I actually kind of like it though, so don't get rid of it, please, WCA. But I have this here skewb with all this stuff drawn on it. I drew all this as part of a math project. Now that math project, a lot of you were curious about it when I mentioned it in my Colorful Pockets video, so I'm gonna tell you about it now. I was trying to do some math with a Super Z, so in case you don't know what that is, that's a combination of a two by two and a skewb. It basically looks like a helicopter cube, but it actually turns kind of the way you would expect it to if you're familiar with two by twos and skewbs. And obviously this is a very unique and kind of silly puzzle that honestly hasn't really been made. There's only like two in existence in the world or something, and anyway, not much mathematics has been done with it because it's a pretty obscure puzzle, so I thought, if I'm gonna do a math essay about something, might as well do something interesting like a Super Z. So I drew on this skewb to make it look like it was a Super Z in order to understand how a Super Z would turn. And then I made a diagram and I used that diagram to explain stuff in the essay that I was writing. One of the main things I was doing was calculating an upper limit on God's number. Now God's number is the number of turns that you can solve any position on a puzzle with. So for a Rubik's Cube, that's 20, because every single position can be solved in 20 moves or fewer. And that is using the definition of a turn as all the things accepted by the WCA. The interesting thing about calculating God's number is that it's really, really complicated to figure out what God's number for a puzzle actually is, but it's not that complicated to figure out what an upper bound on God's number is. So it's pretty easy to prove that on a Rubik's Cube, every single case can be solved in 26 turns or less, or maybe like 24 turns or something like that. But in order to narrow it down to that 20 number, you have to do a lot of work and a lot of just extensive computation. I'm not gonna go into it in this video because it would be really boring and it's sort of something that you would only be interested in if you're interested in doing a lot of math with like the permutation group and as part of group theory. But if you're into that, you can learn a lot about the cube. For example, I didn't really understand orientation parity on a three by three or like how you can get an orientation parity case on a four by four until I did this whole thing. Every piece on a three by three, like a certain turn rotates all the corners a certain way. And because you can only compose algorithms on the cube, as groups of turns, you can only create algorithms that turn things in multiples of a single turn, and that like fixes the r rotation of the pieces. It's hard to explain. But yeah, I highly recommend looking into that if you're at all interested in it. Just learn a little bit about it. It'll help you learn a lot about the cube. That way, when you're explaining stuff to non-cubers and you're trying to explain to them why you can't actually have a piece with like yellow and white on it using the standard color scheme, you can actually come up with more convincing ways to tell them about stuff. And then you can like intrigue them with all your knowledge of like group theory and they'll get really confused and probably stop asking you dumb questions because they'll realize that you know way more than them and they should just shut up. Hey, speaking of which, I love this shirt. I made it myself. Everyone always asks where I got it. I just made it myself. But yeah, if you can think of anything else I can talk about with a skew, we could have like a whole skew week. It'll be like the Discovery Channel Shark Week, but it's just skews. Probably won't be as interesting just a heads up, but you know, we could do it anyway. So if you have anything you want me to talk about with skews, just let me know. Thanks for watching and you know, I I'll see you tomorrow.